What if I told you that you could develop a video game, never actually release it, and yet still make copious amounts of money off of it? Huh? That's the ramblings of the mentally insane, I hear you say. Well, actually it's just Steam Early Access, but also, shut up and let me talk. Because how many of those games have been in Early Access for nearly 8 years? Seven Days to Die is a sandbox zombie survival game with some minor horror elements mixed in that was first released into Steam Early Access all the way back in December of 2013. And it's been in an alpha state ever since then. When you first start the game, you spawn in a post-apocalyptic desolate wasteland, naked and devoid of any idea of how you got there. And don't worry about it, you'll never learn why either. What's important is that you use those steel fists of yours to punch grass, trees and rocks to craft your first set of tools, encounter your first zombie and subsequently die in horrific misery because the server lagged. On the off chance that you do happen to survive, the game has a surprisingly in-depth injury system, so instead of dying you'll just have broken legs for 45 minutes that will only heal if you stand perfectly still and actually get worse if you move. So after a lengthy trek through the south side of downtown Kiev, Ukraine, and interacting with some more of the friendly locals, you meet up with your friends at some random house in some random city that you immediately rightfully claim as your own. Now is probably a good time to mention that every single building in this game is essentially a dungeon, meaning there's going to be varying kinds of zombies and loot in there depending on the game level you are at which is determined by how far you are into the game as well as your own level. The types of zombies you'll encounter may range from tap water consumers all the way to the average VTuber enthusiast as well as anything in between. Meanwhile, the loot can be pretty much anything. Old clothes, makeshift weaponry and sustenance. And looting these houses is gonna be your main way to acquire pretty much any items, armor, weapons, food or even crafting skills. Yeah, skills. Let me explain how these work. I actually have no idea. I'm too illiterate to read all this shit. If you're lucky enough to be playing with friends that actually enjoy this game for whatever reason, just ask them and they'll tell you it really just boils down to two main types. Physical and mental skills. Physical skills allow you to hold more items, move faster and increase your health, while mental skills allow you to craft better and cheaper items as well as unlock new recipes. How do you get skills? You level up. How do you level up? You get XP. How do you get XP? You enable XP sharing and let everyone else do things while you stand around passively gaining XP for free. I'm assuming they ate oh shit, them. Th there's a chicken. Oh fuck. <laughs> yes. I I, I, <laughs> oh shit, there's a chicken, followed by a gunshot, <laughs> followed by XP gain popping up on my screen. I wonder what happened. Allow me to provide you with an example. The average physical player will immediately begin digging straight down into the earth below to construct a bunker for the Blood Moon event that happens after 7 days. You might now also understand why the game has the name it does. Oh, I am brain. not I'm going not down there! I am <laughs> not going down there! Cerny? Right. I have my mouth open at the bottom of the hall waiting for food. <laughs> Thank you. You're unbelievable. Well, I have have to move 10, now. Larry, in my <laughs> Larry, I sent down a can of soup. <laughs> in reality, what this means is excavating a massive fucking cave right below your house that could collapse at any point, because this game actually simulates structural integrity and gravity for everything completely accurately. You can knock down every supporting wall, stairwell, and chair of a building, and it will eventually collapse in on itself. Maybe. Anyway, in the meantime, the average mental player spends every waking second looting every single house in the city and reading every single crafting recipe book that they can find, even if they already know it, because shared knowledge is weak knowledge and you can't have those Neanderthals being independent. You want the working class looking up to you for tools and materials that their simpleton minds simply cannot fathom. The physical players may respond to this abuse by simply stealing whatever wonders you provide for them. You'll never see them again. This may lead to them constantly inundating you with requests to craft a new weapon or tool while you're trying not to get an aneurysm from navigating this game's horrific menus. So while you're all about having fun, that one guy that actually plays the game and knows what he's doing renovates your house, turning it into a Minecraft-esque cube, 
and spending his entire time sorting chests because nobody can even be remotely bothered to stick stuff into the correct chest. Inventory management is a huge aspect of this game. You'll probably spend hours staring at chest screens, figuring out which one of these low-res icons belongs into which chest, mess it up anyway, and make the resident housekeeper mad. I mean, it's the year 2021 and there are still games that don't have Terraria's auto-sort to nearby chest system, which is a mechanic that any game with excessive inventory management should absolutely have. Not to mention that only one person can access an inventory at a time, leaving violence as the only possible option if you want to simply access your storage sometimes. Let's talk about quests because there's actually a quest system in the game. You can either find notes to trigger specific lore-based quests, or find a trader who will both physically and metaphysically prevent you from even getting close to his outpost if you try to approach it during closed hours, because even in a world without order or government you have to stick to a working man's schedule or face complete annihilation. Either way the quests are essentially always the same. Fetch an item from this specific building dungeon and if you looted it before the gods will simply manifest it to be completely repaired to its previous state, or dig up a random chest or kill some local wildlife. Either way, you'll get more XP while doing the quest than you'll get as a reward, and you'll end up selling the quest reward back to the trader regardless. In the world of Seven Days to Die, the American dollar has become absolutely worthless. Instead, the new post-apocalyptic economy operates exclusively on casino tokens from a random casino you never actually get to visit. Which stands as yet more evidence that the gambling economy will completely outlast every other sector in the long run because addiction is far too lucrative. Besides maybe getting a decent weapon early on, or dumping off massive amounts of trash you don't need anymore, the traders aren't really much use for anything else though. Are you an architect? Do you enjoy creating marvelous monuments? Well, the building system in this game is actually surprisingly in-depth and detailed. While everything is still tile or cube based at the end of the day, you can have them in many shapes, trims and sizes, not to mention the textures you can apply and furniture you can loot or craft. Create yourself a little paradise on this bitch of an earth. Or just repair your floor after you accidentally blast it through it again with a shotgun. Besides decorating, you'll be spending your building time by fortifying your base into a glorious fortress in order to withstand that dreadful seventh night, if your host didn't fuck up the config, during which you'll have to fend off endless waves of Nintendo fans. Fortunately, just like their real-life counterparts, these guys are completely incapable of any sort of physically demanding movements, and as such, will run straight into your spike-filled trench while your low-caliber SMG-mounted turrets tear them to shreds. This also means that your underground bunker has been rendered utterly useless. By far the biggest threat to your survival, however, is gonna be the frame rate, which just doesn't exist whenever there's more than five zombies on your screen. You've survived your first week? Good! Now get ready for the next one. And this time, it's even bigger. The cycle will repeat indefinitely, which gives you an actual good reason to progress and something to work towards every time. There's a bunch of other mechanics in the game too, and I don't know how to coherently put any of this information into a category, so I'll just dump it here. The weapons and tools have levels, which not only determine their stats, but also how many modifiers and attachments you can, well, attach. You can find these or craft them, and for some it's pretty obvious where they go, Others, not so much. Also, if you plan on not losing your eyesight by age 25, one slot will almost always be taken up by a flashlight attachment. Believe me, this game gets very dark. The map is divided into different biomes, and if you value your life at all, you probably don't want to visit any of them until you have any form of gear because they are filled with harder enemies and might just kill you ambiently. Is what I would tell you if I ever actually noticed any difference in the biomes beyond the color of the grass. Because at least by the time we visited them, they were no different from a gameplay standpoint. Everything is also procedurally generated, so with enough autism you could memorize every single house and the perfect route to get to the good loot at the end of it. Alternatively, you could get a kick out of exploring the 15 different identical instances of the booby trap strip club scattered across the country. Choose wisely. There's also vehicles in the game. They're crafted from the scraps of material you can find and the remains of the Ford Fusion you dismantled somewhere in the woods. You're gonna want to use these to travel any meaningful distance or carry any amount of material back and forth as the alternative is less than desirable. 
So hop in your Humvee and liberate the nearby desert and while you're there, force your friend to mine up some oil shale while you supervise him because it'd be a shame to leave that stuff lying around. Got your car stuck? No big deal, because despite your character subsisting on a diet of exclusively expired canned food found in random cabinets and painkillers, he'll have managed to maintain her Herculean strength by carrying around thousands upon thousands of rocks. So you can just pick up your car and carry it back to the nearest road. It's probably also worth mentioning that there's no real goal to the game other than griefing your own teammates. You know, putting shit into the wrong chests, breaking or placing random pieces of architecture, occupying chests or crafting stations for absolutely no fucking reason all the time. In all seriousness, your only goal is to survive for as long as you want to. In my case, that is exactly as long as it takes for me to get bored of the core gameplay loop of looting houses, erasing them, and then bothering the resident 7 days to die expert as to what I'm supposed to do next. You could try creating architectural marvels, I suppose, if you feel like playing a more clunky, less intuitive, and probably worse looking version of Minecraft. I don't really know how to properly conclude this video, and I'm not even gonna give you an arbitrary rating. Instead, I'll just sum up my experience with the game. There's very little redeeming qualities it has to offer on a surface level. It looks like shit, it runs like shit, combat is about as deep as a playground sandpit, and building is, while full of potential, extremely unintuitive and janky. And somehow none of those things mattered, because as soon as you play with a handful of friends, the scuffed nature of the game actually works towards your enjoyment. It's extremely easy to dunk on the game for never leaving early access and staying in alpha for 8 years, but I've played it at several different points throughout those years and usually had a more or less enjoyable time with friends, so there's appeal to the game. It's worth mentioning that the game keeps getting updated and changed tremendously with each update, which makes most of the things I talked about redundant in a year's time but certainly increases the replayability. And to be quite honest, the game is basically in a release state. The amount of content and stuff you can do is probably higher than many games similar to it, and I'm pretty sure the devs only use the alpha state of the game so you don't criticize its shortcomings too harshly as they could always be subject to change. I have a confession to make. When I said I won't give this game an arbitrary rating, I was lying. I'm giving this game a rating of exactly as many balls of glue as are needed to make a funny joke. I absolutely hate this game, and I probably will play it again eventually. But anyways, this was my first time trying a video like this, and obvious influences aside, I hope you enjoyed it. For the sake of the algorithm, let me know what you think, like the video, and expect more like this occasionally, I guess, when I have the time. Yeah, uh, see ya.